Hi, it's Matt. Today we're going to look at one of these two Stug 3 models I made, in particular this tan one. The Sturmgeschütz 3, or Stug 3, was the most prolifically made armored vehicle that the Germans made during World War II. And it got the most tank kills out of any armor of any side during World War II. It was an amazing vehicle. It was very successful because of its low profile. To aim the gun, the whole tank had to be turned on its treads. There was elevation and depression in the barrel. The Stug 3 was very successful, especially on the Eastern Front, where it was able to take out T-34s and even the big Stalin tanks. Let's take a look now at the details of this model. And you can see I put some accoutrements on them, chains and picks and a shovel, and it's got the machine gun at the top. As usual, to see how I put this together, I'm going to take it apart. So first we're going to take off the side skirting. This was a series of armor plates that were kind of held off the side of the hull. Here I show the bottom inside of where I mount it to the lower hull. I'm going to point it out right there. You just want to make sure that's there so you have some kind of something to purchase on. So imagine that being stuck onto the side of the tank in between the treads. Okay, we have the good old MG42 that swivels around. And uh, I'm just going to pop that sucker off. Chain, 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 chain of tanks. Okay, now the shovel here is some kind of non-Lego part. I'm going to take off the main superstructure off the top, and you can see how the whole cannon piece is attached to that. The gun is actually off-center. It's a little to the left here, and that's just like the real tank destroyer. There's a dowel pin underneath there, and that's where the gun can pivot. The muzzle brake is made out of two pieces, one of them being this conical-shaped piece with a stem coming out of it. I'm not sure if this is a standard Lego piece or not. Whoops! Pulling off the pivoting assembly, you can see the dowel pin. It's one of those kind of extra long ones. And here's the full length of the barrel. Okay, now I'm going to take off the back angle deck. This one is configured differently than the camouflage Doug 3 I made. We'll look at that in a separate video. Hashtag click the bell so you don't miss it. This is the mantlet assembly, and there was a lot of trial and error with this one. I had to really dig deep for enough tan parts to build this. That's why you see these M3 half-track parts that come off a third-party kit. Anyway, underneath those fenders, there you can see where the tread is being kind of sandwiched in place. The main front fender pieces are being cantilevered out by these 1x2 centering pieces. The whole tank has offsets in that the main body of the tank is 6 studs wide, but overall it is 9 studs wide. These particular pieces are awesome for offsetting things. I wish I had more. Hey, someone put a computer piece on top of my treads. Eh, what you gonna do? It's hidden, right? This little flat piece is just floating on this little one by one stud up here at the front. Underneath the flat pieces, it shows how the 
rubber tread pieces are sandwiched underneath there. Now, the overall width of this tank was nine, and the main body was six studs wide, so I had to custom cut these rubber Lego tape things to make them one and a half studs wide. And I use scissors. Probably an X-Acto knife would have been better. By the way, kids, um, make sure you have your parents help you with that if that's something you want to do. That's how the front of the tank is put together the sloped armor and a little look inside the hull. I'm not going to take it apart any more than this. Uh, the back I wasn't overly happy with. You can probably come up with better solutions and actually on the camouflage tank I did better. Here's underneath the tank and it's really goofy. Um, those are little axle pieces with little gear pieces on them on one side and then your standard axle pieces on the other, so to speak. The, on the other Stug, you'll see it's more conventionally done. The benefits of the rubber treads are that you can make custom widths and lengths for that matter. Uh, the downside is they won't travel and they are static. Shown here is the one by two brick that I have on either side that is used to attach the side skirting on. If I was going to display it without the skirting, I would just take that off and put a smooth, a flat tan piece on the side there. This Stug 3 tank destroyer took a lot of trial and error to figure out how to put it together. And watching this, you can probably see where parts could have been more efficient but I was scrambling with the few tan pieces I had. Hopefully you'll have better luck. And I want to thank you all for watching and subscribing and liking. It really does make a difference. Feed the algorithm. Thanks a lot, y'all. Bye. Be sure to tune in for the camouflage Stug 2. Well, it's a Stug 3, so the Stug 3 2 also.